Talia trying to find a lip gloss, <laughs> and and I just explained to her that I'm a professional. I don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> Zaga, Jagger lips. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. <laughs> uh, hi, it's Adam and Talia again with another quick instant move review for you. So tonight we caught the latest film from filmmaker David Fincher called The Killer. This is based on uh, a 1998... You're eating popcorn right now while we're doing a review? Sorry. That's not kosher. That's not kosher. Sorry. Anyway, so based on a 1998... Uh, noir series of comic books, French comic books, mm -hmm. I think they are. La True. Sorry? La True, I think it's called. La True, got a little <laughs> bit of popcorn curdle on me there. Um, so, uh, this film stars uh, Michael Fassbender as the killer. Uh, do you want to talk about the plot, Tali? Uh, so, basically, it follows a, a for hire assassin whose job goes wrong. Um, and basically leads to him having some fallout in his personal life, which makes him go on a revenge mission. Mm, personal That's vendetta. pretty much the whole... It's like kind of like... Personal vendetta. John Wick-esque. It isn't personal. <laughs> Esque. It is personal. But he doesn't want to make anything But he personal. doesn't want to make it personal. That's right. The whole rule is that he doesn't want to make it personal, but it is personal. But it is all personal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a film of contradictions. <laughs> So this is interesting. It's kind of like a, a hard-boiled thriller where you've got the uh, the protagonist, you know, doing voiceover throughout the the whole movie, um, and it kind of has a few little comic edges to it. It's kind of a almost a satire to a point with a few of the voiceover tropes that are that sort of come into play, which kind of adds a little bit of levity to a to a film that. Outside of that, doesn't have a whole heap of chuckles to it. Um, so this is a uh, this this is a film that has very minimal dialogue, I would say, but a massive amount of voiceover. Like if you don't like films with voiceover, do not see this film because it is majority eight percent voiceover. I would say. Yeah. Um, and if you don't like films that are a slow burn probably skip this one too because it is a pretty um it is a, a it is a pretty slow burn um it's quite calculated i suppose a little bit like the killer is wouldn't you say yeah and it has an absolute killer soundtrack by um atticus ross and trent reznor of course from nine inch nails that have worked with um david fincher on a lot of his movies um you know gone girl social network so on and so forth so, uh, and an amazing soundtrack of Smith songs, also that pepper the playlist that, you know, the killer just happens to be a big fan of the Smiths. And every time <laughs> the radio gets turned on, it just happens to be the Smiths. I don't know. Maybe they got a deal. Maybe <laughs> they got a deal on, on the rights. But what did you think, Tali? I actually quite liked this film. I thought that the way that it was paced was very much reflecting of the character like the whole way that he's very calculated and very much precise in the way he puts his things and does his things um and that's kind of aided by the cinematography in the way that david fincher shoots this as well um but i feel like there were a couple of contradictions mm. like with the whole it's personal but it's not personal it's definitely just a plan it's a definitely just a job like there's no motivation behind this at all no empathy or whatever um like, there was a lot of... There were a couple of contradictions, and the ending did let it down slightly. Mm. I feel like that was the only thing that I really felt... For me, in the entire film, the only thing I really didn't like is the way that it ended. Mm. I really felt like it was not really resolute. It was like kind of like they had an ending, and then they had to scrap it and mm. do something completely different, even though the ending that they had probably would have better suited the film that they were trying to make, if that makes mm. any sense. I don't know how the comic book goes. Mm. Could be completely how the comic book ended. Maybe he did have, you know, that kind of ending. But I feel like for the purpose of this film, it makes it feel quite unfinished. Mm. That's the only problem I have with the entire film. I liked it was a slow burn. I really did like that. I liked the way that he w it was shot. I liked the m loved the music. 
been a while since I've had a film that I've seen in cinema that's actually had a good soundtrack. Um, but yeah, I feel like the only thing that let it down for me was the ending and the way it ended. Okay. That's yeah. fair. Is that fair? Yeah. Eric Messerschmidt um, was the DOP on this again. He's worked with um, David Fincher before. He shot Mank. Yeah. I mean, for me, I described this film and I did before as like a wheel on its own axis that isn't going anywhere because I didn't really feel like there was an, a huge amount of character development at all within any of the characters. And really, the only character we're really focusing on in the entire thing for the entire duration of the film is this killer, is David Fassbender's character. And Michael Fassbender. Michael. I want to say David. <laughs> oh, Michael. David Michael Fassbender. But David as well he's a really good bloke i don't know i mean i think he owns the the the, the coffee shop down the road but um but i mean but i mean yeah i i, I just for me there was yeah so we're, we're sort of you know the dialogue is sort of saying he's not going to have any chinks in his armor he's not going to have he's not going to make it personal he's not going to compromise he keeps trying to keep this mantra going all the time and I didn't see enough cracks in the mantra to see that he is slipping. I didn't see a lot of slipping. It was only in the last couple, like the last half an hour that it started to happen. Yeah. Like. And, yeah. And for me, it felt like, you know, the times that he did improvise, that he said he would don't improvise, don't show improvisation, mm. it paid off for him. So I'm kind of like, well, maybe you should improvise unless there's going to be a big moment at the end where all the things that you improvised on, whether it be scooting through the net to try and find things or doing this or doing that or leaving, you know, leaving someone still alive that you probably should have killed, none of that has any impact on where we end up at the end, which mm. is, for me, as a viewer, if you're going to sit through, you know, a film for nearly two hours, you kind of want a little bit of character progression. Mm. I think, <laughs> I personally think... Because otherwise you're just seeing uh, an actor who's doing a very good job and, yeah, you know. It um, felt quite unfinished. It did. It felt like a film that probably should have had a, a better resolution. Mm. And we, we certainly didn't get it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So a little bit let down. It looked good. Sounded great. Michael Fassbender is just as good as David Fassbender in my mind, whoever he is, and 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 he does throw himself into mm. roles, and he runs very well. He's That's a good runner. Well. Very he's good. a very good runner. Very good runner. And he's excellent at yoga. Oh my god! <laughs> I want to go to Michael yoga. Fassbender's hot yoga class because I reckon it would be an absolute hoot. I mean, oh. you'd be like for the whole class, you'd be like. Michael, could you could you stop your inner monologue? Because <laughs> two seconds. Can you stop your inner monologue for a moment? Because I'm two trying seconds. to focus on my downward dog. <laughs> but oh, anyway, mm. what would you give David Finch's The Killer? I'd probably say six and a half, seven for yeah, me. Yeah, okay. it's not like my favorite film no. that I've ever watched, but it's not so awful that if I wanted to watch. A movie. It's kind of like John Wick for me. Like, if I want to watch something that's just, like, easy to watch and, like, has fun bits to it, I'll, like, put it on. You put the killer on for a fun watch? <laughs> no. Can we just watch like, the same movie? Not a fun watch, <laughs> but, you know, like, those kind of watches where you just want to, like... I don't know. I like watching the choreography of the fight scenes, I think, is what I'm trying to say. It's why I like John Wick so much. Oh, John yeah. Wick. Oh, I could <laughs> chuck John Wick on, no problems at all. <laughs> There's not a huge it's amount a of fights in this. It's a background film. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but you'd be like, Dave, Michael, can you be quiet for a moment? I'm Stop trying to do my David. work. Stop anyway, call him David. all right. You're Thanks. Gonna give, I'm gonna go. Rating, I'm rating. going six, six to <laughs> six and a half out of ten for me as well. I'm, mm. I'm pretty much in the same feeling. I just didn't feel like this film went anywhere. It kind of stayed in one spot, and didn't really do a huge amount. Mm. A couple of little slips, but it didn't make any difference to, to what where the character ended up in the end. Yeah. The end. The end. Good night, everyone. Night. She's a killer. Queen. Queen. All right, no one likes singing. Anyway. <laughs>